I tried for a very long time to get Kotaku to listen to me, to take some sort of accountability, acknowledge that their employee, Alyssa Mercante, was completely out of line for contacting my wife and making it public, going out of bounds, like completely out of bounds. I'm not going to try to rehash everything that transpired, but I made it public to Kotaku. I tagged them on Twitter and said, hey, there's an issue here. You need to acknowledge this and reprimand your employee. I'm not calling for her to be fired. I'm calling for her to have some accountability for her actions. Be reprimanded, written up. Say what she did is not okay. That's not what our company stands for. But instead, her only superior, Carolyn Petit, seemed to have her back on Twitter, basically stating that she would do the same thing if this happened to her and contacting someone else's wife. And I'm just like, if these people aren't going to hold themselves accountable for their actions when they're completely out of line, somebody needs to. And that's exactly what I'm doing here today. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. And I have created something in line with, I guess you could say, homage to what Cabrutus had done with Sweet Baby Ink detected. I'm going along the lines with my own version of that. I'm not really knowledgeable when it comes to Discord. Like, yes, I have a Discord and I use it and it's just overcomplicated for me. I'm like, I don't want to deal with trying to figure out Discord, but I do understand how to run a website and I do understand how to add links and connect the dots and put all these things together. So on my website, I have created Kotaku Detected. And on Kotaku Detected, I have listed all the employees at Kotaku who have done something maybe questionable or at least something to hold them accountable for their actions that might be putting the video game industry in a worse place. Something that needs to be acknowledged so that they learn from their mistakes and transgressions and move forward to a better place. And they're not holding themselves accountable for that, so I figured the best thing to do is everything within my power to hold them accountable myself. So I guess Kotaku can only blame themselves for this existing because they refuse to take any actions on their employees. Quick shout out to those eight channel members that have hit that join button. For the $5 minimum amount a month, you can support Smash JT. And I don't typically bring this up ever, but this stuff costs money, like a lot of money. And I'm kind of doing it all on my own and I'm not like begging for support, but if you would like to contribute to this venture, I'd be more than welcome to you hitting that join button and supporting it. It would mean a lot. I mean, the website itself, having the domain purchase for three plus years over and over again, it's 500 plus dollars, plus the email address is another $180, plus the other stuff that I do, including sending emails out, the articles that I write, all these things cost money. And I don't charge you guys anything for it. So if you are interested in proactively supporting me, I would definitely welcome it. All right, now on with the video. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out smashjt.com for Kotaku Detected. Kotaku Detected is the newest segment of smashjt.com. A lot of work and research went into putting this together, and it is an actively growing site. This is kind of like connecting the dots of the people in the industry, not strictly working at Kotaku, but people who have previously worked at Kotaku, or people who have worked with people who have worked at Kotaku, or people who are friends of people who have worked at Kotaku. This goes very far, and this is just brushing the surface of what is a very, very deep iceberg that I'm sure will go a lot further than this. But this is like my way of trying to expose the ugly side of the video game industry. The dark secrets, the people that cover for each other because they want to protect each other, because they have a screwed up view of the world and they're trying to push agendas in video games to make everyone believe their mindset. Instead of just focusing on making games great and an enjoyable experience, we have to push narratives, DEI, marginalized voices, feminism, transgenderism, like literally anything but focusing on a video game. All these insights, all these mentalities, LGBTQ+, black, white, Asian, how many people are represented here? Who's there? It's like, we just need to get back to the basics of what's important with gaming. Stop fixating on creating these narratives of fake, fraudulent 
companies to suck funding out of governments to create what ends up being an agenda-driven narrative pushing exactly what you want in a video game instead of what's best for gamers. So in a weird way, it kind of does go alongside what Cabrutus did with Sweet Baby Ink Detected, where that was focusing on the games that Sweet Baby Ink had touched or had their imprints on, or at least having DEI in some of the games from certain segments of the surrounding areas. Like that kind of thing Cabrutus has put together on Discord and him and a bunch of other people have made a fantastic dent in the Sweet Baby Ink saga. And I'm trying to do my best to do my part to do the same. And what I'm finding is there's a really dark, evil undercurrent of the video game industry, especially found in journalism, where backroom deals, friendships, partnerships, and agreements that aren't made, aren't being brought to the forefront, being found out behind the scenes and then trying to be stifled and stuffed underneath an agenda so that they can push a narrative forward and having their friends cover for them so that that agenda gets out there without anyone professionally questioning them. So this site that I put together is basically connecting the dots, drawing a string line from one person to the next and putting them all together, this tangled web that they've weaved, showcasing it for all to see exactly what the problems are in the video game industry. And the people People that show up on this website have only themselves to blame for their mistakes, their transgressions, their errors, the way that they seem to just follow the herd and do whatever their superiors tell them to do instead of taking a stand and saying, you know what? No, ethically, that's not right. I don't agree with what your agenda is here. I think we should do what's best for the gamers. Instead of writing articles, hating on people that enjoy video games, instead of pushing an agenda and a narrative on people, let's do this novel thing like focus on making games great again. Not worrying about how much representation is in a game. Not worrying about if the pronouns are there. Not worrying about if there's LGBTQ plus or transgender or if this is the right amount of feminism being injected into this area of it because the state of gaming has been spiraling down a drain for the past two decades and it's reaching a breaking point and while I know this is not a huge professionally managed site by any stretch it's the least that I can do to do my part to try to at least kickstart something maybe even bigger than this I think that this is just like I said scratching the surface of a gigantic iceberg. And the more that I can do to contribute to that, the better the entire video game industry will be. And this leads me right into the Nkotaku petition that I created. And a lot of people were talking about how that's not gonna do anything. Even if even if it gets pushed forward to Geo Media, their parent company, and Geo Media is like, oh my gosh, 100,000 people signed this. We need to close down Kotaku. And they do, they say, okay, the petition closed down Kotaku. It doesn't really fix the problem, the underlying current in the video game industry at large, because these people will just go elsewhere. So in a way, this is going to hold them accountable no matter what happens to Kotaku. Even if Kotaku shuts down later today, these people will still find jobs elsewhere. And if they continue in the video game industry, I feel it's best to keep tabs on them to know exactly what their agendas are and how they try to hide them no matter where they go. And like I said, it's not an all-encompassing thing. It's a growing list as we work here, and I'm open to any feedback if you have any information or anyone that I'm missing that has something standing out that I could add to this page because you feel like they negatively have impacted the video game industry because of either their journalism or lack of journalism skills, or they're a developer, or there's someone in the video game industry that collaborates with these people to push their agenda. Anyone we can add to this list that fits into it, I think is better for everyone to be able to see, expose them, air them out for the entire world to see. And on that note, if you do have anyone to add for it, there is a section at the bottom of the page. You can either tag me on Twitter with any information you have or email me directly at info at smashjt.com. And I am more than welcome to take a look at anything that you send to me to see if it's something that might fit on this page. Any feedback is welcome because this is something that I just kind of thought up like 
maybe I can put something together to start sticking these people in a bucket. Because that's kind of, at the end of the day, where they belong. This shit bucket of the industry. Putting them all in the same area so that everyone can see exactly what's wrong with the video game industry in a glimpse. All these people will be able to be located right away so that if a company's hiring and they don't want to deal with this kind of stuff, the person that they're worried about, if they show up on this list, they can be like, hmm... Maybe we should take a second look at who we're hiring right now because there's some serious concerns that this person brings to our company that we weren't aware of before we started interviewing them. And here's the other thing. If any of these people do come forward, have a full mea culpa and apologize for what they've said, what they've done, how they've acted, the things that they've disgraced the video game industry with, I'm more than happy to show that on this page and explain how they have changed their perception and how they have turned a new leaf and how they have maybe shown that they are willing to change. But until then, these people are going to be showing up there for all to see. Think of it almost like gatekeeping, where these people have invaded our hobby, came into it, and then started gatekeeping gamers out of the love of the game for it. So now we have a place to locate these people and gatekeep them out of our industry. It's almost like a way to justify gatekeeping because sometimes, unfortunately, it's necessary, and this is one of those cases. I'm just doing my part and the best that I can to expose the people that I feel like are negatively impacting the industry that gamers genuinely love. Video gamers that don't want to deal with the drama, the BS, the, the agenda-driven narratives pushing this on you that has no place in gaming. It genuinely does not have a place in it, and they're force-feeding it, injecting it into the narratives so that you have to accept it. And these are the type of people that, like I said, even if Kotaku shuts down, they're going to go somewhere else and start spewing it there as well. I've seen plenty of it on Games Radar, and I've even seen plenty of the people at Kotaku formally working at Games Radar. It's, it's interesting, like I said, how these webs are weaved and how the connections are made throughout the time that they've been working at these different locations. So I'm going to leave it there. But again, if you want more information, check out smashjt.com. I'm open to all feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Smash